Do you ever hear people talk about minerals? They always talk about the fact of how unique they are. There are no two minerals that are exactly alike. And on that note, we got unique minerals right behind us. That's Evan Jones and Mark Meiderman. Let's go in, see if we can find Evan and see what they've brought right here to the 2024 Hard Rock Summit. Evan Jones, Unique Minerals. How hey, you doing, brother? Ryan, good to see you. Great to see you. Evan, you've got a great booth. We're going to go through some of your fantastic pieces. We've kind of looked at a few of them and deciding what we're going to cover, but right. everyone's going to enjoy that. My first question, though, is yeah. give me your honest reaction to the new venue here for the 2024 Hard Rock Summit Show. Uh, we are delighted with the venue. Uh, it's just fantastic. The, the Westin Westminster Hotel is a gorgeous facility. Uh, the ballroom is beautiful. Um, we're very happy with the move. It's just a wonderful show. And, and the impression I get, uh, and I'm hearing this from everybody else, is it's a, it's a very comfortable setting yeah. for the collectors and the dealers to mingle, to uh, socialize, to buy, to sell. Um, I mean, we've got great amenities. The restaurants here are great. Um, you know, the bar is right there if we want to go get a drink and yep. hang out. Uh, it's a very nice, beautiful part of De the Denver area. So is, we, we yeah. couldn't be happier with this this location. Fantastic. And the thing that keeps coming back to my mind is very kind of elegant yet casual. Yeah, yeah. It feels right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the right feel for the yeah. show. It's what it needs to be. Yeah. So super. I'm really glad that you shared that. All right, let's start. Uh, okay. Let's start with this beautiful case right here. Let's look at some great minerals, shall we? Well, why don't we start with this quartz right here? Okay. Most of your viewers are familiar with Japan law twinning in quartzes, but very rarely do you see uh, amethyst in Japan law twins. Uh, or amethystine quartz, mm -hmm. which is what you would call this with the slight purple coloration. Um, this is a really great specimen. It was found last year uh, at, in one of the mines at Charcas, Mexico. And there's, if you count them, there's over a dozen Japan Law twins on this specimen. It's a really exceptional for, for the locality and for really for what it is. There aren't many locations in the world that produced or the, that do produce amethyst uh, Japan law twins. That's superb. Yeah. I'm glad that you counted how many, because I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was bored one day and I started <laughs> counting. So let's see, what else in here do we want to take a look at? Well, let's, let's pan up to the corner here. I was going to say, this corner piece. Yeah, this, this, this is, is just out. an exceptional. And you know how I love Arizona minerals? Um, this is a fantastic thing. This is an old, old specimen of um, quartz that's been impregnated with chrysocolla. It's also uh, called gem silica mm -hmm. in the, the lapidary trade. Uh, now, but this is a natural specimen, this botryoidal uh, quartz here. It's been polished slightly on the edges. This is an exceptionally large example and these all came out in, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, you know, when, when the mines closed in the, uh, at Inspiration uh, in the Globe Miami area. So this is a very historic piece, exceptionally large, and it's, it's just wonderful. I love it. Classic, classic. Yeah, yeah I mean, it looks piece. like Smithsonite, uh, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah, this is this easy is, to assume that it would be. Yeah, so the, you know, it's, it's quartz, really, it's, or chalcedony. Uh, that's been impregnated with with uh, amounts of chrysocolla to give it that blue color. It, it, no, this stuff doesn't come from anywhere else in the world like this. Yeah, that's fabulous. And when did you get that? Uh, just recently, we acquired it out of an old collection. Okay. Um, not long before the show. Uh, but it, you know, it, it, like I said, it could date from the '60s, '50s, '60s, '70s, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Oh, well, let's take a look. We didn't talk about this earlier, but why not? We like Mexican minerals and this is just a really great rhodochrosite from, uh, San Eulalia, Mexico. So this is from the Potosi mine underground, uh, from the manganese or really the silicate ore body, they call it, uh, 
which has a lot of manganese in it and these beautiful rhodochrosite crystals. That's an exceptional one I love that. Uh, for a Mexican yeah. rhodochrosite. Uh, looks very similar to the rhodochrosites from Uchuchacua mine in uh, Peru, mm -hmm. uh, but the, the deposit is very similar, uh, this, uh, these ore bodies. So that's why they look so similar. What a cool piece that is. Yeah. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Speaking of Mexico, we've got another wonderful thing over here. Um, many of the viewers have heard the name Dr. Miguel Romero, uh, preeminent Mexican collector of yesteryear who assembled by far the, the greatest collection of Mexican minerals. Um, he had his own private museum in Tehuacan. This is from his collection. So this is an old time uh, malachite after azurite specimen on calcite crystals from Concepcion del Oro, Mexico. So this is an old time specimen, but look, some of the crystals are unsuitomorph. So you've got these azurite crystals like this beautiful one on the back. You've got these freestanding azurite crystals here. For some reason, those didn't pseudomorph to malachite but these did. And then this lovely dog tooth crystal of calcite, exceptional specimen for uh, El Cobre mine, Concepcion del Oro, Zacatecas, Mexico. You know, and, I'll have to say on a piece like this, it's scientifically interesting because you have these kind of unusual things going on, the uncoated azurite. It is aesthetically pleasing and coming from the Romero collection, it is historically significant. Yeah, yeah it's historic. It all three major it's, points. It's, it's, yeah, this is what you want. Uh, and if you're a collector of Mexican minerals or of copper minerals or even of calcite, this is something you'd want. Um, that, just a great rock. We're very great happy piece. to present this one. And it looks like it comes with some old labels there. Uh, yeah, this is actually, uh, this label Miguel Romero Sanchez collection label. That is cool. Well, why don't we move on to the other case and let's see what we can find over there. Swing the door open. Well, why don't we start here on the top shelf? I am just in love with this rhodochrosite from the Schwanning mine in South Africa. And one of the things I like about it, here, let's get this under a, a good one. There we go. Yeah. There's what we want. What I like about this is it's a pocket. It's like a vug. It's a vug. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's a little different than, than the others that you see uh, now. The back, classic uh, manganite, um, manganese ore. But I just love the sparkle of this piece and, and the vuggy nature of it. We were very happy to get this specimen. And again, I'm these, super. Yeah, these were first found in the late 70s. Uh, most of them came out at that time. But I'm pretty sure that they've, you know, over the years, periodically, some rhodochrosite has been found. So I don't, I'm not sure from when this specimen uh, dates. I don't know if it's an old one or a, a more recent piece, but mm -hmm. um, in any case, it doesn't, it's still great no matter when it was found. I love it, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that was one of my personal favorites. That's going to be one that, uh, it's going to be hard to part with. <laughs> You'll be happy when it sells, but it's well, like, yeah. Get him. Uh, now oh, another, I like having that. Yeah, that's a, that's a cool rock. Now, let's go to this shelf. Here's a specimen that people have, have really been commenting on. It's a malachite from Congo, but just look how interesting it is with these, cons, these I guess, concentric rims of malachite around these kind of you know, spherical shapes. Really different. Um, that's that I haven't ever seen anything like that. Yeah, it's I mean, it makes you so, wonder how did it form so like odd. that? Well, it's you know, it's it almost seems like it was dripping. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is from flowing, you know, copper rich water that's flowing, 
you know, just like any cave formation, uh, except in this case, it's malachite that's forming and not calcite. So you mm -hmm. get these, these cave-like features, stalactites, stalagmites, um, you know, these, these interesting botryoidal forms. So it, absolutely, it's, for, it's from dripping water. And, and the interesting thing about it is, uh, from what I was told by a doc from uh, down in Bisbee, Richard Graham told me um, that this, these things form in, uh, you know, ambient temperature water. Oh, okay. You know, it's not hot water. It's, right. it's cold water uh, that, that these things form from. Interesting. So, uh, so that's kind of interesting. You know, everyone assumes, oh, it must be hot water. Well, it's 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 not. It's mm -hmm. you know, caves are not yeah. hot typically. They can be, but you know, like the gypsum caverns in Mexico are very hot. Uh, so could it be hot solution that has all the dissolved minerals, and then when it cools, it crystallizes? I don't. No, no, I think it's I cold. I obviously know nothing. <laughs> it's it's cold uh, as it's dripping. Okay. You, um, you know, it's 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 uh, you know, it's groundwater. Mm -hmm. It's just super saturated with copper carbonate, and uh, and, it, and it just you know it it'll drip on stuff and start start building up the layers just like just like calcite. Yeah, that's cool. Man. So uh, it's really fascinating stuff. Again, I'm not an expert on this, but I'm just relating what uh, what Richard Graham, Mr. Bisbee, was an expert told me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what else did we want? Oh, yeah. Wolfie jumps out at me. Oh, yeah. This is just a great, you know, again, we're going back to Arizona. Now, that is a red cloud wolf night. This is what you want. God, look at the jemminess. You've got that. luster. Oh. You've got that fiery red color. No damage. No repair. Nothing. This is, this is a great thing. Uh, it's a good size, nice small cabinet. And this was actually fairly recently collected. This is not an Ed over really? piece. It's not from the 90s. This is just from a couple of years ago. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. There's still activity going on at the Red Cloud Mine. It's not open. You know, you can't just go there and start digging. Right. Um, I think the folks there still do a fee dig, you know, so there's people that live there. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, this was one of the better pieces that, that came out recently. I was very thrilled to, to acquire it. Congrats, man. Beautiful and, piece. Well, you can see why Red yeah. Cloud Wolfenite is world so class. So desirable, yeah. You know, I mean, there's to me, there's two uber world class Wolfenite locations. That's Red Cloud and San Francisco Mine in Mexico. Those are kind of the, the pinnacle for the species, uh, in my opinion. And I personally love those San Francisco's just because I was living there for two years. <laughs> yeah. Well, now, you definitely have a connection to that mine. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that pyrite. Yeah. Oh, boy. I just, yeah, I just love pyrites. It's a common mineral, but I love pyrite. Uh, I know there are a lot of other people that love pyrites, too. And this is just a great Peruvian pyrite from the Wanzala mine. God, that's exceptional, Large man. octahedrons with these beautiful modifications. And, you know, you see literally thousands of pyrite specimens from Peru. But every once in a while, one will come along that's, that's, that really stands out. And I think this is, this is one of those. That's great. Yeah, and then a cool piece. Yeah, and if I could do a little name dropping, this is an ex Gene Myron specimen. Oh, uh, Dr. Myron. Dr. Myron, yeah, you know, and he he likes, you know, sure he specializes in pegmatite minerals. Sure he has a beautiful collection of Kongsberg silvers, but he, you know, he's a mineral guy. He likes other stuff, so he had this pyrite. Superb. And another one I wanted to talk about is just right over here. This thing kind of blew my mind when I saw it. Um, and what this is, this is actually a giant wolfenite crystal. And it's coated with druzy quartz. This is from Fuadi, uh, Congo, uh, which I believe is not, let's see, it's Congo Brazzaville, I think. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. It's, yeah, it's, it's the Republic of Congo, not, not the, the Democratic, Democratic Republic, Republic of Congo. Congo. It's right. hard to keep track of these things. <laughs> exactly. But... Um, 
No, these have been found periodically from this location since I think the 50s, uh, and they're still finding them occasionally. So this is a fairly recent, recently collected piece, but this is just, it's so cool. The, the sheer size of the wolf and ice from this locality crystal, can, yeah. yeah, and they get even bigger. They, they, they get huge from wow. there. And they're not always coated with the quartz, but, uh, but this one is. And um, I that just, tells a neat story. I just love these, you know. What a great piece. I like this quartz here, uh, this knob of quartz here. You could actually stand it up vertically. Yeah, That exactly. might even be a better orientation. You could well, do it like this. or so As you're rotating it, I saw you hold you it vertically. You could do it like said, this. Well, that kind of works. Yeah, you know, so there's a couple of options here for, for display. Uh, this shows the, the wolfenite crystal. This might even be a, a more aesthetic presentation. You might have to sell it with two bases. What? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take your pick. So that that's a fun piece. You know, I'm a wolfenite guy being from yeah, Arizona, so I like wolfenites from everywhere. All right. Well, we've got one more case to look at. Okay. So let's see what we can... Let's get this one opened up. We've got a couple things we can look at here. Why don't we just start with this little guy right here? Because I am so in it's love with this one. specimen. You know, good the, the saying, good things come in small packages. This is a, is a good thing in a small package. So these are malachite stalactites coated with that druzy quartz, which always sets things off. And this is from Congo. Okay. And I dropped the label, so. <laughs> Here, let me set it down. We, let's get a, a better location on this. Oh yeah, yeah, the Tenke mine area. It's one of the copper districts in Congo. And we're talking about the uh, Democratic Republic of right, Congo. Right, okay. DR Congo. Yep, DR Congo. That's how we label them. And what's great about this is, I mean, there's just, it's not repaired, it's not damaged, it's just gorgeous. That's beautiful. Yeah. And right next to it, we've got this lovely red barrel from Utah hanging out. Red barrels. red barrels are always yeah. great. To yeah, see. yeah, they are. You know, these are the world's finest red barrels. They're, they're found in a couple places. In uh, the geologic setting for these is called a topaz rhyolite. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a it's a lava that's been enriched in certain things, beryllium, uh, for example. Uh -huh. You know, one thing I really love about these is you know the best ones are good old American minerals. Yeah. Yeah, and, and this is a classic, uh, you know, the Wawa Mountains deposit has produced uh, by far the finest red barrels uh, in the world. It's a, just a lovely little miniature. Uh -oh. well, let's talk about that one too. Yep. Okay. Now, I want to point out something else here that you know, over the years, we've handled a lot of uh, material from the Milpias mine in Mexico, the fabulous underground copper mine that's produced so many wonderful specimens of azurite, malachite, brochantite, so on and so forth. Uh, but I thought this was just an exceptional thing. You've got three minerals here. So you've got quartz, well, actually four. There's chrysocolla in the matrix. Then you've got quartz with dioptase crystals and it's kind of faint, but running right down the center and underneath the quartz, there's blue shattuckite. Oh. Um, and uh, these quartzes came out a few years back uh, and I saw a lot of examples, but this is the fa my favorite piece of the find. I just love this, this the architecture, the stripe of sparkly quartz with this dioptase setting it off underneath. It's just such a cool piece really well balanced you know the crystals are small but they're very high quality yeah exactly um, 
Again, you know, yeah, size doesn't really matter. It's the quality. Yeah, yeah. And the Mill PS mine has just produced so many wonderful things. I mean, everything is high quality from that mine. Um, or so it would seem. Um, let's see. I think we had something on this well, shelf. Malachite back yeah, there. yeah. Now this is this was great. This came out of an old collection in Europe. And what you're looking at here, let me get it out very carefully. Um, in fact, I, why don't I just hold it here? These are malachite stalactites, obviously, mm -hmm. but this isn't from Congo. This is from the Ural Mountains in Russia. Malachite deposits in Russia from the 19th century. So you've seen wow. you've seen all the Russian, uh, uh, you know, the malachite room, the malachite uh, uh, objects of art that were carved mm -hmm. during czarist times in Russia. This came from those mines, so Incredible. this this is a very historic specimen. It's 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 the best Russian malachite I've had. This is, I can't even remember when. It's yeah, so cool. Yeah. Uh, and, and you recently acquired so, that from a collection? Yeah, yeah. This came out of a collection. It was in Europe, where you know that's where most of the Ural stuff is probably ensconced. Right. And uh, I just we like copper minerals, and this is a very historic. Ural Mountain piece. I was very what happy a cool to get. Piece. It. Yeah. Let's see. I haven't had a custom base made for it yet, so we kind of have to improvise right now. There we go. I love that, man. You know, because we're so used to seeing malachites with the chatoyancy and kind of the yeah. Jersey exteriors like the other piece that we saw. Yeah, and you can but see how this different so this different. looks. It doesn't look like a Congo. Malachite, it, it, at least to me, it's 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 yeah, got you a look at it and it's like it's got a different, different it's got a this. different character. Um, you know, it doesn't look like it's from Bisbee either. So you know, each of these locations, you know, you see enough of these specimens, you start to to gain an understanding of the subtle differences between uh, specimens from different places. Absolutely. Okay. Well, dynamite, Evan, did it again, brother. Thank you. We will catch up with you yeah. again in... And, uh, oh, yes. This is the best part of the booth. This is the best part of the interview. Uh, my dad couldn't be here to interview me, but uh, well, he's, he's here in spirit. I'll have and to, his I'll, picture's I'll, here. Yeah, I'll have to say this because recently, last week, the sponsor series for What's Hunt in Tucson 2024 was put online. And... Last Tucson, or this this year's Tucson, was the last time that we had your father yeah. on a What's Hot in Tucson. And I've gotten so many comments from that clip saying how people miss Bob. And I miss him dearly. And I know that, you know, you're still going through your process. But I love the fact that he's still here with all of us. So thank yeah, you for that. He absolutely that. is. He, you know, he attended every Tucson show from 1960 to night to 2024 uninterrupted amazing so i miss here's him to, dearly here's to you dad absolutely thanks right. brother brother thank you man yep cheers